The morning they called the ceasefire, or the first morning that I actually went to work off this ceasefire, it was a strange feeling, uh, almost a, a deflated feeling. Um, and probably it's the first time in 20 years I realized, if you like, the tension, the stress that I'd been living under, that they could bring anything, you know, from, from, from bombings to shootings, you know. That was always in the back of your mind when you came into work. For 25 years, Belfast's emergency ambulance service have risked their lives to save the victims of the Troubles. Despite the ceasefire, they still work on the front line of a divided city. For all the hopes of peace, the crews share a widespread fear of the future. They carry with them memories of violence and bloodshed, which can't be wiped out overnight. Okay, left, left. Uh, we're going to uh, North the city, North Queen Street. Uh, it's a shooting, so we not know uh, what's involved till we get there. Spring in Belfast, one Tuesday evening. Look at my son of a bitch. Yep. Ambulanceman Brian Maguire hurries to the murder triangle. This is uh, a notorious part of trying for sectarian uh, shootings. And it's basically, basically a situation of up by ear uh, when we arrive. The pen are many casualties involved and to... Uh, what extent the injuries are. There have been more sectarian killings here than anywhere else in Northern Ireland. I told you a fool, son. I can never see that. He's already on the side down there. It's on down, yeah. There's an awful lot of people out. Just take it easy. Where are we? I don't know where we're going. Probably. In there. There we go. He's on this? Yup. Okay, lads, take it easy, lads. Come on. What the fuck are you filming for? He's lying in there. Yeah, he's dead. The victim, a Catholic, is already dead. It's the second terrorist murder of the week in Belfast. Uh, East Elm 421, uh, this is a DOA. Uh, We'll need the uh, security forces here, Robert. Uh, Roger. Uh, Roger. The scenes of crimes, boys will uh, check the uh, check the house out, and uh, the uh, the coroner will be called in, and they'll deal with the body in this particular instance. Who was in the house when it happened? Don't know. Nobody. She's sitting on the stairs crying. Did nobody see any gunmen? Well, this, this looks like uh, a sectarian uh, killing tonight. Um, the details are very, very sketchy, but as far as we can make out, um, we don't know whether there's one or two people, one or two gunmen uh, into the house and shot a chop in, in his own living room and away again before anybody actually knew what had happened. The victim suffered uh, a gunshot wound to the head and I would say to all intents and purposes, he was probably dead before he hit the ground. If you like, we're, we're, we're here in this, this earth for a short time anyway, and it's very, very, very short. And for someone to come along, a complete stature, he doesn't even know you. Never ever saw you before. Probably doesn't even know your name. Take your life away. I take a life, a love, love one away for, for some, for some cause. That, that's, to me, that's crazy. I just can't understand. Can't understand that. Can't understand that. That's crazy. Ninety people work in the city's emergency accident service. The largest ambulance station is on Broadway, just off the Catholic Falls Road. It's where Brian Maguire is based. An ambulanceman since 1974, he's had to deal with two decades of terrorist violence. Now a paramedic, he works in 12-hour shifts. I have to check all the contents from my bag. 
uh, looking through bandages, uh, back of stuff in the almonds. And this is the stuff that I would carry to, with me uh, every uh, situation I go to. Belfast's police and fire services are mainly Protestant. But on the ambulances, Protestants and Catholics work side by side in even numbers. Brian Maguire is a Catholic. What about that old two, Eddie? You're in the workforce here in the Almond Service. I can identify a chap who's a Protestant. He can identify me as a Catholic sort of thing. But it's, it's something we, we don't sort of discuss, sit down and talk about. We inherit it. Indeed, we live with the, the legacy of fear and mistrust over the years. And one has to watch what one says sometimes in case you give offence. And it can be taken up in the wrong context. Okay. You know, there's no such thing as a Protestant Almond's man or a Catholic Almond's man. We're, we're, we're Almond's people. We are the Almond Service. And the, the people here, especially in Belfast, because that's, that's where I'm stationed, and uh, that's the reason why we're, ex we're accepted. Um, we, we can really go anywhere in Belfast at any time, uh, as opposed to the fire service, indeed, in the past, have uh, been interfered with, if you like, and, and that their fire tenders have been stoned and hoses cut and things like that. And obviously the police have a problem uh, and the soldiers have a problem getting into these areas. Um, I'm not saying they can't go in and they do go in, but they wouldn't have the same freedom of movement that the Almond Service would, would have. Brian and his partner, Eddie Richmond, were called to a car accident in Catholic West Belfast. It's an area notorious for joyriders. After three? One, two, three. Okay, John, we're going to lay down flat, just a precaution anyway. Just drive on then. I don't know which tried to get everyone through and he done it which one away again. Two Raiders, remember, yeah? Yeah, I think it was two. Yeah. It was only one hour. Yeah, what speed did you say you were talking, John? Me? Right. So it was almost stopped, Brian. Right. Just, just starting to turn in. Think he was talking fast, okay? Oh, I think he was. Yeah, okay. Just careful over. Just head on to his head inside. He's very short. I'm sure you'll wear a seat on, okay, will you? a few people at the scene and they said that they heard the joy up on the top road uh, doing what they call wheelies, that's handbrake turns etc. They're probably hand glue, uh, maybe uh, drugs like e-cobs and stuff like that. Um, that particular area is just a joy is a big problem around there. Well, more times than enough you'll find that they actually cause the crisis but get away. I know one of the innocent members of the public. The, t the times that we would get them uh, would be when the local power melodies catch up with them later on and probably uh, get me kept. The early hours of the morning. Reports of gunfire in a Protestant area of the city. On board, Joan Turner, a Protestant, and her Catholic partner, paramedic Davy Sands. Uh, there has been known to be uh, fatalities in that sort of territory before, but other than that, we don't know anything. It could be punishment. Maybe somebody's tried to actually kill somebody or, or whatever, uh, I'm not sure. So we're just taking in this unknown territory again. This happens quite well regular in these incidents. Here, uh, we have to find out firsthand what's actually going on. You see what's down here at the bottom? Just looking around, uh, there's signs of activity up on the hill. Police, sir. Yeah, please. I'll see what's what. All right. What's the matter? What's the problem? No, not well, it's a problem with the shot. A young man's been shot. It looks like a punishment shooting by loyalist paramilitaries. Yeah, we'll work on a batter in the, in the wagon. Yeah. Well, it looks like gunshot wounds the legs, and there's an R paramedic over there with him now. And I'm just sitting up here because he's on a wet, grassy slope. He's getting soaked. He's all right there. Yeah. We're moving here. 
You moving? I Fred, hold on. Right on the side. Yeah. Get that. What's up, no. That's just a uh, repair good. But he's uh, probably losing now. Yeah, come right here. It's going to take the bag here. Yeah. 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 No, no, baby, don't do this. Um, Somebody else will do it. What? Um, yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's a great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 The victim's losing blood, so the crew want to give him extra oxygen. Do you want to hold it yourself? You hold it close yourself. I know. Go ahead. It's actually better. We have to do. Tell you what, you take as much as you want. Take it all away then if you want. No, take it on and off. Okay. All right. What happened here, eh? I've got a You want any medication at the moment? No. Uh, there you go. Can you know what type of phone is a short one? Revolver? That's just, just a short one. Keen to be seen as neutral, crews avoid asking too many questions at the scene of terrorist crimes. What's that fucking second time? Second time? You're a lot of pain at the moment, aren't you? want to take some good pain? What's called Antinox? Gas? No, 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 no. At the city hospital, the trauma team has been alerted by ambulance control. You're looking brave and well. And you are looking brilliant. Uh, one, two, three, gunshot wounds, two, three. Thighs, but one accident wound is this underneath. One something about it, right about here. Okay. Well, up. Okay. Thanks. Hey, there. There we go. Right. Joan and Davy help the trauma team assess the damage. Breathing and circulation are checked. Pain relief is given. The bullet's entrance and exit wounds are examined. Oh yeah. See. Uh, Two thighs, one exit, and uh, up around. Come out about up here somewhere. The revolver, apparently. Uh, well, you get it? bullets come in your foot and come out your shoulder, you know, and hit everywhere in between. So. Yeah. yeah. You just never know what sort of damage it's done inside. I, I mean, any bullet going into a body while it's in your kneecap or wherever, it's, it's fairly serious, you know, like you're losing blood somewhere. And he wasn't really losing a lot of blood at the scene. No, so it's probably all yeah. internally, you know. I mean, you could have hit, hit the femur, the femoral artery. Yeah, it depends on, on the type of weapon you use, on yeah. the type of injury it causes. What was this? Uh, apparently a revolver. So, yeah, something small, you know, low velocity, you know. Because if it had been high velocity, it would probably taken his legs off. So it's sort of the unpredictable, it sort of makes, well not makes the job, but it gives you an edge here in Belfast, you know, and you're always sort of, your adrenaline's always sort of going, you know, when you get that. I mean, we've been to shittings that we're in in the way before the police have got to you and things like that, you know, so it could be still gunmen in the area um, and you're going in there first, and especially like this maybe going up an alleyway or something, because I actually got a fellow one night and he thought we were the gunmen. He'd been shot in an alleyway, and it was an alleyway that was snaked about in behind the back of the factory. And we were coming up the alleyway, and he was actually crawling away from us because he thought we were the gunmen, you know. I mean, the situation like that, you, you sort of have to step back and say to yourself, 
gosh, I mean, there could be gunmen still here. You know, they could think we're the police arriving or, or anything, you know, and it could open up on us. The crews can cope with such dangers, but some of their memories are much harder to live with. When you're lying in bed at night and you're nothing else occupying your mind, it always goes back to the shank of bomb. What happened and what you did, thinking maybe you could have done this and could have done that to see if maybe the others. Uh, I suppose feeling guilty in a way that, you know, people actually did die. But again, when you look and see the injuries that these people had, I don't think surgeons could have saved their lives if they had been at the scene. Ten were killed, over 50 injured. Paramedic Eamon Ferguson was among the first to arrive at the scene of the Shankill bomb in 1993. The sights obviously were, were horrendous. The smell was, was incredible. Uh, the touch, the human flesh that had been blown up, uh, mutilated, crushed by rocks, and the taste of dust. It's hard to breathe at times, it's hard to see, the dust was biting at your eyes, and biting at your throat and, and someone handed me a bottle of sparkling water and, and when I drank it, it was like drinking acid. The, the sensation, the burning sensations, you know, and people the screaming and uh, relatives in the background pulling at you, wanting to know their loved ones were they there and all those things all come back to you when you, when you sit back and think about it again. You know, you can't just go home and forget about those things and carry on with a normal family life um, out of work. You know, every minute of your day seems to be occupied with thoughts of, of incidents that we were attending, what you did and what you could have done. Saturday night in Belfast is always busy for the crews. For Joan Turner and Davy Sands, this is routine work, but it can be difficult and dangerous. You can get very frustrated at resting your neck for somebody who is just completely loaded with alcohol, and the more or less they're going to taxi home, or the worst about that is they're using up a vehicle, an action emergency vehicle. Whereas a genuine person could be in need of that vehicle, he could be dying as a result, and uh, that frustrates me more than anything. Uh, <coughs> and saying it, another thing is, when they do get on board, a lot of them give you abuse and just take you for granted that you're you're there as their servant, you do as you're told, you know. And you got to hold back. I mean, you I say we're all human, and you, you know, you're sometimes you're born and say, but you try and hold. Hold back, you know, they're only going to go with maybe five, ten minutes. A man has cut his wrists at a bar in the city centre. Put his arms up, just hold them up, they get there. Blood doesn't run uphill. Do that with a bottle or what, or what did you do it with? You alright, man? You alright? Keep it dressed up. Did we get us a wee bandage? Whoa, 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 I'm dying. I'm dying. The man's best friend is anxious and angry. Come on, now be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet now. Calm down. Stay nice and steady. Stay nice and steady now, all right? What's your name? Be calm. Okay. That's good. Now stay calm. We're here to do a job. Fair enough. Right. Make sure you do it fucking right. I'll tell you what, take yourself off, man. Take yourself off. Take yourself off. Or what? Tell you, take yourself off. Earlier this evening, Davy had to deal with the patient attacking him. This looks like another difficult situation. Tell you what, I don't want no trouble. I don't want no trouble here. Now go away. Tell you. Get him off. Get him off. Get him off. Have you done for assault? Just go away. We're not here. We're not starting anything. He just wants to help them. 
Yes, and you fuck things up every fucking ten, you people. All I want was my jacket. No, 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 I would let you make a phone call. Just so think of all this, like, shouldn't you? If we stick your hand through windows. No, I don't even mean it. That's the truth. Right, well, let's cut these now. I picked a fight with this fellow when he Why? couldn't have. Why? Okay. I was out of order and I was a bad man. My sister's missing. That's why. Well, why did you have to take it out? I'm not sorry, boyfriend. Huh? We're trying to help him. Excuse me. You're going to nail me, nail me, okay? That's okay, though. Okay. I'm going to get nailed. No, you're not. I picked the fight with an ambulance. You're not on. You're not going to get nailed. It's not on. You're not going to get nailed. I'm going to get a fight with you, man. You shouldn't drink at all, you know? Full stop. But anyway. Anyway. Anyway, it's a Friday, Saturday night. It's called Friday night, Saturday night. Is there glass on it? No, I don't think you have, no. But I just put them on to stop I any bleeding. I'm feeling diabetic. I can't put injections. Right, get them. Right. Right. Is this your girlfriend? Yeah, I can still lay here, don't you? Sharon, do you want to come in? It's all right, it's not No, hold on. Let's see if we can stop over there. Come on, take a wee seat there, Sharon, love. You're all right. No, I don't have a personal apology. I'm very sorry. Did he hit it on the window or did he hit them on a glass or a bottle or something? A window or something? Oh, you weren't with him, okay. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. You keep her fucking calm there. Yes, he's calm now. Calm down. Calm down. Everything's calm. Everything's calm. Everything's calm. Everything's all right now. All right, move on. Move on. It felt like it was girlfriend, and she'd walked away, and in his temper, he just put his hands through a pit glass window, slashed both wrists. Not too badly, but you know, painful, sore. <laughs> And a rather silly thing to do. But you know, it amazes me why people injure themselves. You know, if you're going to fight with somebody, why not hurt them? <laughs> you know what I mean? If my husband walked away, I wouldn't harm myself. I mean, there was a girl I got one time, and her husband walked out on her. I just had a few drinks, started to feel a bit sorry. Same sort of thing. She literally threw herself out through a big plate glass window and practically severed this arm. It was only just about hanging off. And with the drink and all in her, she got very emotional, very. And I went in to talk to her and calm her down, and I said my name, you know. And then we got her in, and it took myself, my mate, um, and two policemen to get her into the ambulance. And it took myself and two policemen to sitting on her <laughs> the whole way to the hospital. <laughs> and she flung this <laughs> rather delicate arm all around her face. The clubs and bars have closed. As usual, by this time on a Saturday, Every ambulance in Belfast is busy delivering patients to the hospital. Load up. And if all the vehicles are here, where? What's happening in Belfast? An 11 year old. Black bit of his name. Vodka. And Coke. I think it was a Coke, but I said it was the same. What, a or what? No, no, no. Well, we're, we're coming into Shanker Road now, and it, if you like, this is the uh, the Protestant uh, Loyalist Heartland. As you, as you can see there, it's the Irish tricolour, and that will go up uh, when the bonfire is lit tonight. All over the city, Protestants are building bonfires. Tonight they'll be lit to celebrate the Protestant victory over the Catholics in 1690. July the 11th is a focus for Protestant loyalism and anti-Catholic hostility. For Brian Maguire, this can be one of the most difficult nights of the year. Sometimes there's uh, a lot of drink taken, you get people getting burned, and sort of drink a lot of incidents, maybe some fights. So would any Catholic venture into any of the Protestant areas on a night like tonight? No, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Like 
an ambulance man had a very obviously Catholic name, do you have to take care in that case? Well, because of the fact that you, you, you may get some people there, again, maybe the, uh, the young element, um, who may be the worst to wear for a drink, would maybe pick up on a name, and uh, then problems could arise. To be honest with you, not basically looking forward to tonight. All tonight's casualties will be taken to the Royal Victoria Hospital on the Catholic Falls Road. That's a pretty big one there. Yeah. You actually see the heat. It's a great cost. That'll probably stay lit some more. 41, an emergency call to Milner Street, Hoff Donegal Road. Person unconscious, 0033, over. He's down 41, Roger. Unfortunately, we've got a situation here in Belfast where uh, people on both sides of the illegal political religious divide will identify with a particular hospital. And uh, people from this side of the town certainly would not identify with the Royal Victoria Hospital. So it's quite possible for that reason that they may not travel the hospital with us. You mean just because the Royal Victoria is in a Catholic area? Yeah, they just refuse to go just because it's the Royal. Uh, we're not going to get down there. Down, down this one. We're trying to get to the bottom of this street. Uh, the location we were looking for runs along the bottom. Uh, but luckily enough, we're going to do any one of these streets here, and it'll take us into it. We've got my green bag already. Eastern 121, an emergency call when you're ready, over. Hold on. Uh, it's a girl's phone that we've cracked her head. Thanks, there's a few drinks. Okay. Right. Thanks. A girl has fallen off a 10 foot wall, injuring her head. They're concerned that she's losing consciousness. How do you feel now? Edna. You will speak to me? Edna. Is my first name Edna, love, isn't it? Uh, first name is Edna, yes. Edna. You okay, Edna? Yes. Tell, tell me what the thing, thing is. There. Are your shoulders? There. Down to your elbow? Or no. down to your fingers? No, not to fingers. Right. Have you any previous medical history? Do you attend the doctor for anything? No, not bad. Right. Enjoy yourself tonight. No. No, not really. Well, you wore up until now. <laughs> I'll have a party in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll try it, couldn't we? Try it, Melbourne. Do you want it or do you want it? Margaret. Margaret, do you hear me? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Jump for a girl. Were you not very good? I was. I'm not sure how to drink tonight. I had about six times. <laughs> Right, okay, tell me, why are you lying here? Were you assaulted? No. Right, why are you lying here in an alleyway? Tired. You're tired. Are you drinking? Yes. Right, can you sit up for me? No. You can't sit up for me? Do you want to go to hospital? No. Right. Can I help you? Yes. From your state in East Belfast, there's been a child burnt. Okay. A child weaker, it's a very badly burnt. I think it's actually a... Go ahead. Hello, ambulance service. I'm Reborn Sardin, please, quite. Hello, ambulance service. Hello, could I have an ambulance to Montreal Street, please? They're having a party and somebody's jumped out of a top floor window and hurt himself. What number is it? What number What number is it? Just try and calm down. It's been a long, tense week. Brian and his colleagues get together to unwind. Protestants together with Catholics.
coffee and I'm going to start 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, a far fighter in his fourth year is getting about two and a half to three thousand pounds a year more, right? Probably three thousand more. Right. Fire service, please, sir. I'm standing orders. We don't. That's right. We don't have standing orders. That doesn't matter. That should make a difference. It certainly does. Well, how does it make a difference? How does it come this? We are not even regarded as an emergency service. We are an essential service. We are just a part of the health service. It's as simple as that. There. We are lumped in, if you like. With the ancillary yeah, staff. Right. And uh, I tell you what, Desi, no disrespect to the ancillary staff, right? Porters to message, right? My wife, my wife's part of the ancillary staff. Yeah, I'm a paramedic, right? Right. Okay, I'm there giving life saving drugs, right? And the government don't even recognize that there. I'll tell you what, they recognize a firefighter, right, before they recognize me. Right? A firefighter in his third or fourth year is on about two and a half, three thousand pounds a year more than me, right? What's a person pay for? What's the person think there? Hello, ambulance. Hey, just hold on. Hello, ambulance. Oh, I need the police. I'm a bloody ambulance. You might say this name, name, name. What is the address? What's happened there? What's happened? Somebody's been shot for fuck's sake. Right, just hold the line and we'll put you through to the RUC. Just hold on. Two crews for emergency. Two crews. Two crews. We have an analysis time for a shooting. Uh, don't know anything at the moment what uh, type of shooting it is. So, uh, Moments, 10.21 on a Monday night, John Hanna and Stevie Shannon are called to a Catholic estate in West Belfast. Yeah, we we'll have a standard procedure now, which uh, two crews are sent out to each shooting. There's some crews only on the scene, there's more than one casualty. This guy is directing us to it there. It's another punishment shooting, but this one is just the start of a long night of violence. Right, go ahead, John. Echo, echo. That's it. No, don't pull us off. That's it. That's all right. That's us. Yeah. Left knee, right angle. It's only if the bullet hits the bone that the, they would have the real pain because then obviously there you're talking about a fracture in a case like that. But he seems to just have tissue damage, muscle, where the, the, the bullet has went through the, the muscle part of the leg, you know. But apart from that there, he seems to be all right. <laughs> so that wasn't, wasn't too serious? It wasn't too serious. We've, we've, we have had worse. Uh, it just depends, as I say. If the bullet hit an artery now, you'd be in trouble. You know, you'd have severe bleeding and... He would be complaining a lot then, if not unconscious, you know, but uh, it's, very, it's a minor wound as such, you know, as punishment shootings go. <laughs> Thank 
stories coming from them and some of them tell you that they had to be at a certain place at a certain time otherwise you know that would have been it maybe instead of getting shot once it'd get shot twice or three times you know this sort of thing but uh, that's that's usually the way it goes you can tell the severity maybe what they've done by usually um i lifted a guy one night and he was shot four times and i said i asked him then why he was shot four times and it, his reply was he only stole nine cars what happened stand at the shops and come at a shop with a car pulled up okay. guys do it at a car with a hood on pull me in the back of the car by now reports are coming in of shootings in catholic areas all over the city well, this will be our second shooting this evening. Uh, there's, there's reports of uh, a possible six or seven people being shot tonight. Are these all punishments? Uh, we don't know what's at this location at the moment. The last one was uh, the sort of hallmarks of a punishment shooting. It was a uh, knee and ankle. Yeah, it is. You don't ask them what it's for, because they won't tell you anyway, so you better not ask them. Uh, well, it's possible. Brian McGuire is also on his way to a shooting. He's just dealt with another four kneecappings, all in one house. Everything's, um... I just don't know where everything is. Everything's just a mess. I just sort of grabbed a lot of gear, threw it in, and uh, when I get there, I'll just have to hook through the, uh, the bag, and uh, that's hoping I get there there's good light so I can see what I'm doing. When you get a call like this, you're thinking in your mind, what's the scenario going to be when you get there? Uh, what sort of equipment are you going to use? Um, what way am I going to handle it? Uh, will it be a hostile crowd there? Whatever. And all these things are going through your mind. And then when you arrive there, um, then all you do is concentrate on what you're about. Uh, and everything else leaves you. Uh, you, you, you. Everything around you just becomes a blank. And all, all you do is just concentrate on your pace and on what you're doing, basically. Um, well, that's it in theory. Gunshot, please. And the other one is shot over. Stevie and John reach their second patient of the night. Can you be on standby for an ambulance coming in from Northwick Drive, Strathroy? On the board, uh, double knee capping. Double knee capping. Fair enough. Uh, ETA, I would say about five to seven minutes. Okay, thanks. Stevie and John bring the patient to the nearest hospital. With so many shootings, all hospitals in Belfast are on alert. Extra doctors have been brought in. These punishment shootings are handed out for so-called antisocial behaviour. Um, for example, drug pushing, 
joy riding, uh, burglaries breaking into homes, etc. And uh, tonight, uh, there seems to be a big crackdown tonight. There are people um, who would uh, condemn it, and there's other people who would, would condone it. Uh, there, there, there are some people, um, so it all depends, uh, if you happen to be one of those people who have been at the wrong end of these anti-social elements, if you like, uh, then uh, this is something that you would be uh, calling for and shouting for, because unfortunately uh, the normal rule of law doesn't operate. Uh, the police, um, I, I wouldn't say they turn a blind eye to these things, but they're more important things to handle, if you like, uh, and they're a bit loath to come into these areas. Uh, and go off their joyriders, um, so it's left to the paramilitaries, and uh, these are the type of areas where, where the paramilitaries gain their support, and something like tonight, this big concerted way of tonight, will uh, achieve a lot of support for the Republican paramilitaries, if indeed they are the people who are responsible. Probably 12, 13, 14. A very busy night. Good morning, Kevin. 
Uh -huh. Yeah, she has to try to do that, but it doesn't go off. It doesn't go off, no. How long did this happen, yes? Just like... 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 Just I was walking in the shop to get the cigarettes for my mother and get trailed under the car. There's no here with me. I got a kneecap and toilet for lunch. I was shopping and I don't even know nothing about. Can I do it to you? Hey, all right. Only uh, evidence when there's no exit. Can I get something? Yes. I feel all right though. Hmm? All right. Yeah. All right. I feel all right right now. Right. What happened here? That's where I took out this first leg when the last time I was in the cap. Took him out of my ankle to put him in this left leg. Brian and his colleagues have dealt with 16 kneecappings. Some of the victims will soon walk again, but there have never been as many in one night. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning, night, 10 past 3 in the morning. We've been home from 8 o'clock last night. Uh, be but because of tonight's uh, situation, the adrenaline's still pumping. And I feel like I could up and run three miles. And, and that's, for me, that's where the stress factor comes in. You get a buzz out of that as well, right tonight? Yeah, you get a high. Um, it's like a drug, in fact, you know, uh, and you re relive that in your own mind for a couple of days later. Um, all the people that were involved tonight, all the rest of the ambulance crews, uh, we talk about it tonight, we talk about it tomorrow and the next day. Um, and you, you stay on a high for a few days afterwards when you're dealing with a situation like that. As the ceasefire holds, hopes of peace deepen in Belfast. But paramilitaries on both sides are still carrying out violent punishments. And the legacy of the past means the future is full of uncertainty. I certainly welcome the ceasefire. I welcome um, all guns be put away, if you like, and then to all violence. Uh, having said that, again, we're talking about Northern Ireland. You're dealing with maybe 800 years of history here. What we have to overcome is the fear and the mistrust. That's the big problem. Yes, we have a, a ceasefire. We don't have peace. We haven't got rid of that fear. We haven't got rid of that mistrust. So a, a, a mixed feeling of a bit of optimism there, maybe a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But having said that, have this feeling that things could go drastically wrong and it could all blow up in our faces again. And which could make this last 25 years a picnic compared to what you know, could happen in the future.